Good morning. I wanted to uh, draw your attention to the sample paper in the back of the MLA section of a writer's reference. Okay, so right before the APA section on your uh, on the tab there is the sample MLA argument paper. I want you to pay attention to all sample papers that I give you that are official. So any that have the um, notes in the margins, I have shared at least one with you. I'll share another one with you as well. The other sample papers are student papers, so they're not perfect, so be mindful of that. Okay, so I wanted to point out some things here to you. You're going to set this paper up just like I showed you with the annotated bibliography. You're going to have your student name. So I can get that to focus. Uh, my name, the class, and the date. You're also going to put in your last name and page number. So that is just like the annotated bibliography. Um, you're going to just center your title right after the um, header information. Okay. So no extra spaces. This is all double spaced. And for your this class, I want you to set it up in Times New Roman 12 point font. I want to show you, point out a couple of things about this paper that you need to be looking for. As noted in all the comments on the documentation exercise, it is never okay to just drop in a quote, okay? So that's one thing we're going to look at here. Also, um, pay attention to these side margin notes here and follow suit. So your introduction paragraph should set up the, the issue in context, in some sort of context, and then for comp one, I want you to end the introduction paragraph with your thesis statement. The thesis statement is that topic and your opinion. Okay, and so the information about the argument paper talks about thesis statements and the sections in a writer's reference do as well. Um, you can at any point go back to some of those old videos that I've shared with you. Even that cheesy 131 video will help you with thesis statements. Now moving down to this first body paragraph here. In one of the um, PowerPoints that I shared with you earlier, I talk about pie paragraphs. And so I want to show you how this first body paragraph works as a pie. So pie is point, information, explanation. Not every paragraph is going to be perfectly aligned with that, but it is a good model to follow. So let's see how this author, Sophia, Sophie, does this. She says, debates surrounding the government's role in regulating food have a long history in the United States. That is the topic sentence. So now we can expect some support here to show about the history. Okay, so let's see what she says next. According to Lorraine Goodwin, a food historian, 19th century reformers who sought to purify the food supply were called fanatics and radicals by critics who argued that consumers should be free to buy and eat what they want. She set up a signal phrase saying, according to Lorene Goodwin. She also showed Lorene Goodwin's credentials. And she is using the author's ideas and only directly quoting fanatics and radicals. Anytime you use an author's ideas, you are still required to give them credit. Okay? Because she's already said the name here of the author, then the page number is what will come in parentheses Bef uh, before the period here. Okay, thanks to regulations though, such as the 1906 Federal Pure Food and Drug Act, food beverages and medicine are largely free from toxins. In addition, to prevent contamination and the spread of disease, meat and dairy products are now inspected by government agents to ensure that they meet health requirements. There is really where she ends her information, okay? Now she's going to get into a little bit of a value, or yeah, uh, explanation, sorry. Such regulations can be considered reasonable because they protect us from harm with little, if any, noticeable consumer cost. It is not considered an unreasonable infringement on personal choice that contaminated meat or arsenic-laced cough drops are unavailable at our local supermarket. Rather, it is an important government function to stop such harmful items from entering the marketplace. So there's her first body paragraph. It is nicely formatted with the topic sentence that sets up the paragraph, information, and then the student's response or explanation about that. Look at the next paragraph. Even though our food meets current safety standards, there is a need for further regulation. So we can 
expect that this paragraph will be about further regulation. She does include a figure in, in the paper and that is fine um, as long as it, it, it um, enhances your message. It can't be thrown in and also it does not count as far as page count. You have to have four pages of writing. Okay, I want to show you a couple of other um, quotations here. So let's look at the top of page three of her paper. In California in 2011, leg legislators failed to pass a law that would impose a penny per ounce tax on soda, which would have funded obesity prevention programs. And in Mississippi, legislators passed a ban on bans, a law that forbids local restrictions on food or drink. Let's look at this. So, um, she does not provide necessarily a, a, um, a signal phrase, but she's weaving, this is called quote weaving, weaving in the quoted information into her own sentence. Notice that there are these the ellipses here. That means that there are words in the original quote that she is um, choosing not to use. And because she has not offered a signal phrase, then she puts the author's last name and the page number in parentheses. Notice the quote ends, then the author and page number, then the period. Let's make sure we get that straight. Also down here we have one where there must not be an author. It's still, as a result, kids see nearly 4,000 ads per year encouraging them to eat unhealthy food and drinks. She got this from Facts on Junk Food. If you ever, ever use numbers or statistics in your work, you have got to cite it because I know that you guys didn't go out and investigate um, how, you know, didn't poll all the kids, right? Also notice that um, she does have, deal with the counterclaim, okay? So there's always another side. There's an opposite side to your argument that you need to address. Okay, if you look here, let's look at the works cited page to end this. Now, you guys are only required three sources, but by all means, if you need more sources for your paper, please feel free to use them. Um, it's very possible that you do need more than three. Um, works cited is that this is the last page. It's its own page. So even if you end the paper, you know, a little bit high here, um, you're going to go to a new page for the works cited. You will just simply center the title works cited in the middle and then these are the citations so on your annotated bibliography you had citations with annotations now you only need the citation no more annotation on this part just the information of where you got your source it should be alphabetized by um, author's last name and anytime we have the word the here that doesn't count the the articles don't count you're going to go with the um, first word after the article. Okay, I hope this helps get you in the mindset for writing your paper. On the discussion board this week, I'm looking for a one body paragraph. So make sure you have all the, the pieces in there, your topic sentence, your information, and your explanation. Thanks.